Just now we, heard, we have heard the uh, uh, word of God, and let us uh, tell, let us speak about how to put this in reality, in real life. Um, Pastor Murray asked me to tell some stories mission, from missionary fields, and uh, I'd like to start from my personal testimony, because I see new, new people, new faces, and uh, I greet you. So, <clears throat> my name, you know my name, Misha Vashengolz, I'm a Jewish Christian, and a missionary with international mission to Jewish people in Jaffa, Israel, not in Ukraine, in Jaffa, Israel. Uh, do you remember in the Bible from which city the prophet Jonah wanted to escape from God? Jaffa, yeah. From Jaffa, from, from my city in Jaffa. Um, I'd like to, to share my personal testimony, what God uh, did in my life for me personally. I was, born, I was born in a former Soviet Union in uh, Ukraine, in Odessa, Ukraine, uh, into a family of Jewish atheists. So my parents were Jewish atheists. My father uh, was reading Soviet, Soviet communist news space, newspapers and even British newspaper, communist newspaper. So I was, uh, uh, an, I was a Jewish atheist and I even carried around a large portrait of Karl Marx in my bag. Uh, I planned to join the Communist Party of the Soviet Union and preach the Communist Gospel. But uh, maybe, my, maybe God laughed, laughed a lot when he heard, um, when he knew my, my thoughts and my plans for my life. Uh, at that time, I believed that uh, a good Jewish guy should be a well-educated, well-behaved person, but should definitely not believe in God. And uh, more than that, I believed that it was impossible, absolutely impossible, to be Jewish and believe in Jesus. But I had some interesting question in my head. For example, uh, why... Uh, there is, there is no justice in the world. Why? Or, for example, why evil people, why do evil people succeed? But no answers. Communist ideology could not give me any, any answer. When I was 20, I visited my friend. He was a new believer. Uh, my friend uh, offered me a cup of coffee and told me, Misha, you are a sinner. And I was offended, offended. I thought, I'm a good person, well behaved, I'm not a drug addict, I'm not alcoholic, alcoholic. Uh, I don't speak uh, very bad words. But my friend said, you're a sinner. The Bible says so. So my friend so loved me that he told me that I am a sinner. And I began thinking about, about this. Uh, a few years later, my wife, who is Gentile, went to a church, and I started to wonder where she was going. I'm her husband. I must know where my wife goes every Sunday. So this is how I came to a church, just out of curiosity. I'm very curious. And God used this. Uh, when I came to a church, as uh, I listened to the choir singing, I thought, wow, they are ideal people. They are ideal husbands, ideal wives, I thought. And so I started going, I started attending this church. Do you understand me? Maybe slower? No? Okay. okay. I, I started going to this church regularly and the reading in the New Testament. A deacon gave me a New Testament. I began reading. And uh, at the end of every sermon, my pastor uh, told people that we must uh, repent and invite Jesus into our, in our heart, into our heart to believe Jesus, to follow Jesus, to repent. Uh, and I had a big problem. From one side, when, when I was reading New Testament, from one side, on one side, I felt in my heart intuitively that it is true. It is true. From another side, on another side, I am atheist. I'm an atheist. How can I believe? And I, I, I could do nothing, absolutely. My problem was the same, atheism. Then some, something um, unusual happened. 
I did something wrong, wrong at my work, some, something like sin, sin. And uh, that, made me, that, that uh, helped, me helped me realize that my life is going downhill. And uh, exactly 30 years ago, on the 31st of January, 30 years ago, I understood, God, God helped me to understand that uh, it is moment, it is the moment when I should uh, stop and uh, repent. Uh, it was uh, late evening, my wife and my daughter went to bed and uh, I knelt, knelt down, knelt down and asked God, God, uh, forgive me this one sin I made. Only one sin. Because Jesus died for, for this sin and rose again. Risen, risen, <laughs> rose again. And then, then I real, in, in a few days, I realized that, that, I've, that I have um, a few more sins. I repented in these sins. And then I continued uh, reading the New Testament and uh, a little later I understood that I'm, I'm a sinner at all, at all, absolutely, and um, I, I'm, I was going to hell. And th this was this, this point, this my way to, to the Lord. So I did not, uh, did not come to faith uh, immediately at one, on one moment, but uh, gradually, very, very slowly. We Jewish people go to, go to repent, repentance very slowly. So Jesus, Jesus forgave me as he promised. Jesus gave me new thoughts, new plans, new ideas, and he still uses me, uses me. Uh, I understood, understood that, uh, to be, that to be Jewish and believe in Jesus and is very unusual, very unusual. But I, I knew that it is right, uh, it is something right before, before God. Uh, in our church, I was the only Jewish person. Uh, therefore, people loved me so much. Okay. Uh, then, mm -hmm. uh, then a little later, um, another Jewish mission uh, invited me for uh, street evangelism, and I began uh, began uh, do this uh, this work. And uh, uh, eight, eight, eight years ago, my wife and me uh, moved to Israel for for mission for missionary work. Um, I'm Jewish, but for me, Israel is a very strange country. With a ver with very strange language and uh, regular Palestinian rocket attacks, and uh, I, I was not sure that my wife will will be ready to move move to Israel, and I asked her, "Are you ready to move to Israel?" And uh, unexpectedly, she wanted to move to Israel even more than I wanted. So. <clears throat> Three years ago, uh, God transferred me to, to, the, to, to this ministry, international mission uh, to Jewish people, and uh, I minister to Russian to Russian speaking Jewish people who live in Israel, who moved from the Soviet from the former Soviet Union uh, to Israel. In Israel, uh, there are one on almost one million Russian speaking Jewish people who moved from the Soviet uh, Union. They they speak Russian, they think Russian. Uh, they need the uh, Russian-speaking Russian -speaking ministry. So we have a lot of, a lot of possibilities, a lot, of, a lot to do uh, in Israel. Uh, most of these people, of these uh, one million Jewish people, almost one million Jewish people, they are an atheist or agnostic, mostly a atheist. Uh, they have st a strong Jewish identity, identity, but they don't believe God uh, in, with, which, with, uh, with whom we have have a saving relationship. For them it is like something like religion, very, very strange uh, religion. Some of them never se have never seen a Bible and they never, um, uh, never heard the clear explanation of the gospel. Uh, today, today I'd like to share with you about how God, uh, God uh, uses me and other uh, missionaries, my, um, our team, and uh, I want you to I want you to know to know more how I how I have seen God at work in Israel. Uh, one question: Have you ever been to Israel? Who who attended one? Okay, usually ah, two people. Thank you, thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, welcome. <laughs> uh, usually we we hear on TV on TV we hear about uh, political news from Israel, and uh, nobody tells explains about the spiritual situation. Let me explain you something. Almost all people, Russian speaking, Hebrew speaking, almost all people in Israel. Uh, don't know even a real name of Jesus in Hebrew. Yeshua, Yeshua in Hebrew, but they don't know this name. They, they think about Yeshua, um, uh, um, Jesus Navin, Navin in English, in English. Joshua? Joshua, Joshua, yeah, Joshua. But uh, they even pronounce uh, Jesus' name not correctly. They say not Yeshua, but Yeshu. But Yeshua is not the name, it is curse, very bad words. Uh, and uh, if you would uh, tell Jewish people, in, in London for example, if you would tell Jewish people about uh, Jesus and uh, he, will, he will pronounce Yeshua, it is not the name, it is curse. The right name is Yeshua, which means God saves or uh, uh, the, the Lord saves or the Lord is salvation, Yeshua. Yeshua, God's, God saves. Uh, Yeshua, salvation in Hebrew, small lesson, and Yeshua is curse. Mm, it is forbidden to, pron uh, to pronounce. So, uh, maybe, you think, maybe you think that uh, people in Israel uh, uh, read the uh, Old Testament, maybe. But uh, what is the real situation? People in, Israel, people in Israel don't read New Testament like we read the Bible. Don't read. Uh, even in schools, in uh, usual s schools, uh, teachers uh, have teachers uh, give uh, lessons from the Old Testament, but it is not uh, about uh, relationship with God. It is just Jewish history. It is stories about uh, kings, about uh, just uh, as a history. Uh, teacher in sc teacher, uh, school teachers cannot cannot teach uh, children about a relationship with God because they don't have this relationship. Therefore, most of Israelis are, are secular Jews. Uh, maybe some of you think that uh, rabbis uh, read the uh, Old Testament. No. No, they read, usually they read a portion, part of Torah, Torah. And uh, then, we, then they read uh, uh, Talmud, Talmud, which is commentaries and uh, discussions, very long discussions for example, on uh, Sabbath, uh, on Saturday, what to do, what not to do, uh, and uh, sometimes in Israel uh, you can see people who read a prayer book, Jewish prayer book, in public transport, in in buses. But they don't, in, even the rabbis don't read uh, the the Old Testament. Even even uh, my fr recently my friend met a rabbi, rabbi, and this rabbi did not know who Isaiah is and who Jeremiah is. Very strange. Okay, um, it is it is not easy to, to be a missionary in Israel. That's why I'm here. I, I'm asking you to pray, to pray for for God's work for for me personally. And let me tell something about church. Is, is it interesting for you? churches in Israel? Church. There are more than 120 churches in Israel uh, about persecutions. Officially, no persecution. No one uh, kills Christians with stones. No, no one. Uh, Israel is a normal democratic country. Uh, law, in, in this country, law uh, works, works. Uh, it, it's officially. But if you would, if you would uh, preach the gospel or give out uh, leaflets, uh, gospel tracts, um, in half hour, in half hour, anti-missionaries, will come and they will cry out, missionary, missionary, don't get this literature, don't get, don't, don't listen to them. Uh, so it is, not, uh, it is not easy, but uh, nobody can, uh, um, can stop evangelism because, because God's heart, God wants to save Jewish people in Israel and even non-Jewish non people. Uh, so, uh, people in Israel, people is, people in Israel, uh, mm, they have special, uh, 
Let me explain. People in Israel don't want to be religious because they see um, hip hypocrisy, religious, religious hypocrisy. They see uh, what rabbis uh, say and what they do. And on another side, people in Israel are not ready to, uh, to accept Jesus immediately. Because if I, if I tell them uh, you need to believe in Jesus because Jesus is, is the Messiah, they think, oh, I will become a Christian. But uh, the, word, the word Christian for us means follower of Jesus, who is born again, Jews and Gentiles, who are born again. It is belief, it is faith for us to be Christian, to be a Christian. Uh, for Jewish mind, to be a Christian means you was, you were Jewish, and now you are not Jewish by nation. You are a traitor. So we need to explain people that uh, it is normal to be Jewish and believe in Jesus. Everything is okay. Okay, uh, but some some Jewish people come come to faith. Why? Why? Because churches pray. Churches pray, and uh, you pray. No, uh, and there are some reasons uh, why why many Jewish people don't believe in Jesus. Uh, what do you think? Why do many Jewish people don't believe in Jesus? Your your opinion. Right. The first reason they don't they did not hear about Jesus. If they did not hear, how can they believe? And uh, the second reason <coughs> is. Uh, is very usual, not because of Holocaust, not because of so-called Christian anti-Semitism. They don't believe in Jesus because all people are sinners, including Jewish people. We are sinners, every sinner don't want to follow Jesus, don't. Even sometimes we don't, we don't want to, to be obedient. So, that is, that, is why, that is why we need to preach, we need to pray to, to, continue, to continue this work. And uh, people in Israel have um, some, uh, people in Israel are not the same, we see them on, on TV, on TV screen. We think that uh, people, almost all people are religious. What is real, uh, what is real st statistics? Statistics, yes. 45% uh, of them are secular, or atheist or secular, 45%, besides, 19% uh, observe traditions, but they, n they are not religious, 19. That means that only 36% are religious, uh, orthodox, ultra-orthodox, and, and, and other. Okay. Uh, some people, are, uh, let's talk about uh, minister, uh, ministry and uh, this, this issue. Why Jewish mission? Do you see this topic? topic? Why Jewish mission? If God so loved the world, why Jewish, why Jewish mission? Uh, when people ask me why Jewish mission, why Jewish mission, uh, I tell them why not. Because uh, very often uh, Jewish people answer a question with another question. A real, a real answer, yes. Why not? Why not Jewish mission? Um, usually we use. Uh, a little bit uh, humor in our, in our preaching the gospel. Uh, we say that uh, Jewish people have uh, three languages, Hebrew, Yiddish, and humor. So if you will preach the gospel, use a little bit of humor. humor. Uh, why Jewish mission? Uh, I'm, I want to ask you, who was, who was uh, a first missionary to Jewish people? Who, who was the first missionary to Jewish people? Jonah. Jonah? Christian missionary. Oh. <laughs> missionary. Jesus. Jesus. No? Jesus said, I, I was sent, I was sent only to the lost sheep, sheep of, of Israel. And uh, it's okay. He, uh, during his first coming, his coming, he focused on ministry to, to Jewish people. He, and as his followers, we can't ignore the, this fact. He was a missionary. It's normal. This sounds okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, 
And his, his ministry, Jesus' ministry, uh, uh, had uh, great, great, great success. Jesus taught Jewish people. Jesus opened, opened the heart of hev Heavenly Father to Jewish people. Jesus performed, performed uh, miracles. Jesus prepared, Jesus prepared Jew, uh, Jewish disciples uh, so that they would preach the gospel to other nations. And uh, what is the most important? That Jesus took upon him the sins of the Jewish people. Yes, we say Jesus died for all, for all people. But in, the Isaiah, in Isaiah 53, we read that Jesus took upon him the sin, sins, all sins of Jewish people. And all, only his death and, and the resurrection can, only our faith in his death and the res resurrection can save up, us from sin. And let me remind this verse, first to the, first to the Jewish people, then to Gentiles. Uh, please be careful. The Bible, does not, uh, the Bible does not teach that we need to preach uh, only to Jewish people. No, no way. But it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes. Firstly, to the Jewish people, because Jewish people were, were ready to, to hear and to accept the gospel. Next, again, why Jewish mission? Today we, we read this passage, a long, very, um, very important passage. Let me read one verse at, um, using another, another translation, NIV, NCV, NCV translation, Romans 11:29. God never changed his mind about the people he calls and the things he gives them. So in, his, in God's mercy, he, ca he gave uh, Jewish people some gifts. And uh, the main gift that uh, he, called, he called Jewish people to believe in Jesus, to follow Jesus, and uh, to become priests, priests for the whole world. And uh, when I minister to unsaved Jewish people, I remind them, God called you to, be, to, be, to repent, to believe in Jesus, and to go and preach the gospel to all, to all the nations. It is strange for them. For them. Okay, why Jewish, why Jewish mission? Because Jewish people is one of the most unreached, do you know this word? Unreached nations in the world. Only half percent, only half percent of Jewish people believe in Jesus, uh, the Messiah. Uh, last, last spring I visited uh, London, London and suburbs, and I visited some churches. How many Jewish believers in Jesus uh, did, I, did I meet? What do you think? One. One. One, one. And uh, she came to me and uh, said, said to me, I am no longer Jewish, I am a Christian. I answered, no. You are Jews, you are Jewish and Christian at the same time. She was happy and brought offerings. Okay, uh, why, Jewish why Jewish mission? Uh, it is God who does, who does this. Uh, God uh, sends different missionaries to, to the different group of people. For example, God sent uh, Peter to, to Jewish people and God sent Paul, Apostle Paul, to Gentile people. Jesus said, go and, make, I need to read, go and make disciples of all the nations. And all the nations include, include the Jewish people, isn't it? Okay, do you agree? Okay. Okay, by the way, one more answer. Why, why Jewish mission? By the way, there were almost no born again Jewish people before their reformation. Reformation? Reformation. Mm -hmm. of, the official church was powerless, absolutely. And after Reformation, Bible-based churches appear, then Jewish mission ap appeared, and uh, then, then they began, began uh, work, missionary work with Jewish people, and uh, we, we, we knew that more and more Jewish people came to faith in Jesus. And Bible says, Bible says that the salvation of Jewish people will be a blessing for the whole world, we heard today. What will their acceptance be but life from the dead? So this is my, um, my answer to question, why Jewish people? Uh, why Jewish people? Uh, would you please uh, turn on uh, PowerPoint? Maybe, can I stand, take stand, stand here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh.
This is my wife. <clears throat> uh, so we live in Jaffa, and we have a special monument and fountain. Mon monument to the whale who did not want to eat Jonah. This reminds us about importance of obedience to God. Okay, how do I work in Israel? Please, next. Next, okay. Uh, I get to know people at public events. In Israel, if you have relationship with a person, you can preach the gospel. If you don't have relationship, it is impossible. Uh, for example, during uh, the one day bus excursion, excursion or tour, bus tour, one day bus tour, bus excursion. And also on public events, also I entered a, a ping pong club and get to know people to preach the gospel, to preach the gospel. Uh, here you can see I offer free Bibles after our church organizes Christian excursion on, on Bible sites, sites in Israel because there are many, many places who, who are connected with the Old Testament and New Testament. Uh, I offer free Bibles and uh, people order these Bibles and then I visit, visit them, uh, bring these, these Bibles and uh, start, uh, start to work to start to work work with people. Uh, this way I build my caseload of contacts and uh, I give one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one visit. I call people during corona, corona period. I called people and did visits. For example, visit for uh, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, uh, one hour. So we read the Bible. I explain every word, uh, every phrase, every phrase of Jesus, for example. And, uh, how to use uh, this Bible verse for, for our life. So we read the Bible and study the Bible uh, seriously. Um, okay. Oh, please, please, next. Next. Okay, thank you. Exactly, exactly. This is a real, real visit. We have, this man had, has, uh, his, had his, his own Bible. And during Corona crisis, we we did visit the visit on the on the street. Okay, and uh, next, please. Thanks. Okay. Um, also, I also develop a YouTube channel. Sorry for Russian. Sorry. Uh, YouTube channel, and uh, I shoot uh, short videos, one and a half minute video. It is like a leaflet, Christian leaflet, but uh, in video video leaflet and many topics, many, many, many questions. Uh, it's so-called YouTube channel, simple answers to simple questions. And what, uh, what do I do? Uh, every three weeks I send uh, this link, link on, on video, I send this video to all, all my caseload, to everyone. Why, why I send this? Because uh, people answer me. I send them, people answer. And uh, I can evaluate a level of interest. Interest that can be higher and less. If people answer me, yes, good, uh, well done, uh, you are a true believer, and I understand that the level of interest, and interest, interest spiritual interest is uh, higher. If people answer me, he writes me, uh, there is no God, you tell me fairy tales, understand that level of interest is almost zero. And I need to wait maybe two or three or four months. And then I send, uh, every, send uh, videos every three weeks and wait. Okay, and also one time we used uh, a, a video on, through Facebook. Uh, it was Facebook advertisement, it is for money, but not too expensive in Israel. Okay, uh, this second, the second, <coughs> mm. Yes, it, this woman uh, came to faith in Jesus uh, for four years. Okay. For four years, uh, I ministered to this uh, Jewish woman named uh, Tami. Let me tell you, tell, tell you a little about her. Uh, she was born in a secular Jewish family. Uh, so both of her parents uh, were Jewish. 
And uh, when her parents divorced, she married a Muslim. Uh, have you ever heard about a Jewish woman who, who, uh, who dressed uh, like a Muslim? Jewish woman, like, like a Muslim. A Tammy had to wear a hijab, hijab in English, hijab for, for many years. Her husband, uh, her husband was, mm, was not so kind. Her husband uh, often showed her a big knife, knife, and told her, if you will not obey, if, you're not, if you will not obey me, I'll stab you to death. Uh, after some time, uh, Tommy left him and searched God, searched God for 20 years. Uh, she tried to find God in Russian Orthodox churches, but, but could not. And then uh, she moved to Israel, moved to Israel, and she began to pray, God, give me the truth, give me the, th give me the truth. And uh, at that moment, I met her uh, during street evangelism. I gave her a Bible, and, he, and she began reading, began reading uh, a Bible. And God did uh, everything, everything. Tammy, when Tammy uh, was, re was reading a Bible, she felt horror, hor horror, horror in, uh, in her heart. Uh, she said to me, how could I live in such filth? But Tammy ha ha has seen God's, God's light. Now, now Tammy came to faith in Jesus, and she, she, f she shares her faith with uh, other people. But she shares her, her faith very lovingly, very softly, very tenderly. Uh, and she, she was baptized uh, in our church. And uh, recently she told me, uh, the most important thing in my life is that I have found Jesus, the Savior, the Messiah. Yes, people often left me. Even my Jewish parents left me. But Jesus did not leave me. He is my reliable support. He is faithful. Would you please show a video of baptism? I'd like to show you a video of her baptism in our church. Okay? Uh, just, just, just stop, stop. Just show the first. Ah, stop, 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 stop. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. Sh show, but no, no, no. Don't. Uh, okay. Let me let me translate. They speak in Russian and and and, and in Hebrew. An elder. Just stop. 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 Mm -hmm. An elder asks. Stop. 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 No. Don't. An, an elder uh, asks, uh, dear sister, do you believe uh, that Jesus died for your sin and rose uh, rose again? Uh, do you believe that your sins are forgiven? Do, do you and she said, yes, yes, yes. And uh, this elder uh, says, I am, I am baptizing you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then in Hebrew, please show it from the beginning. Sound. Sound. Thank you. Next person. Interesting? <laughs> uh, next person, uh, I will show her photo, her photo a little later. Uh, her name is uh, Kyla. Kyla. Um, I met her unexpectedly at the post office. I w ah, yes, yes, yes. Kyla is, Kyla is here. Um, I was sitting at the post office and reading a Jewish Christian article. She was sitting behind me and watched secretly what I read, what I read. And she, she saw, she saw, she understood, and then she came to me and asked, who are you, what is your organization, what's your faith? Um, and I explained who, who I am, who I am, and uh, she was so interesting that she came to our church immediately, and uh, she, I, I began ministering to her. Um, know, maybe 20, we had 20 visits, one-on-one, -on -one in, 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 the, in the park. 
she began reading the Bible, reading a Bible, and now she's a believer. And when I asked her, uh, Kyla, do you believe that God forgave all your sins? She said, I think yes. Why? Because Jesus paid for my sin, sins. This is uh, her story. The next uh, is this, this guy. Uh, his name is uh, Igal. Igal. He is uh, 40, 41. Several years ago, he attended Jehovah's Witnesses co uh, organization. organization. You know this, yeah? And uh, God, God, um, and God took him away from this organization because Egal did not, under did not under understand anything. And uh, I, I met him and just, just explained that uh, the Holy Spirit is, is a person, Jesus is uh, God in flesh, and uh, this was something new for him, absolutely new. And I gave him the Bible, normal translation, and he came to faith, and uh, this man is unusual because, because he has zeal, zeal for, uh, he is hot for God. And now his dream is to be a pastor. <coughs> wow. We'll see. Uh, his, favorite, his favorite place in the Bible is Matthew chapter 5. Uh, I didn't teach him to preach, but he began preaching to his relatives in Australia, in Ukraine. Uh, he, he decided... Uh, at, uh, in the beginning, I, I ministered to him and explained the Bible. And he decided to do the same with his relatives. Visits one, one, one and one. Uh, so we, I don't know God's plan for this, for this guy, but, but would you please uh, pray for him, okay? Um, okay, uh, in general, I, now I minister to about 90 Jewish people, so I visit them, uh, work, with him, work with them, uh, call them, and uh, my, my desire, my, my, my wish, my desire, I'm asking you just to, to pray, to pray for this minister, to pray for this, to my contacts, to pray for, to pray for me. Because God's heart, God's heart is to, to save Jewish people, to save Jewish people. Uh, that is why uh, I offer you, on, okay, at this, on, on this table, on the table, please, please, please don't take, uh, for children, it is not for children, okay. Uh, you can uh, fill in this uh, card, so-called uh, watchman card. Watchman card, watchman card is our prayer card. And would you please pray? Uh, we would like to send you my prayer letters. You can see my prayer letters also uh, three times a year. Would you please pray and support us uh, pray prayerfully? Prayerfully. You can fill in and give me this card because today in the evening I will fly to Tel Aviv. Okay? Um, here is the second. Here is the three minute, three minute explanation. A CEO, a director of our ministry, will explain this uh, better than I can explain. Sound, sound. In Romans 10.1, the Apostle Paul writes, My heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. Now, although the Jewish people are the ones who originally brought the gospel to the world, the Apostle foresaw a day when the roles would be reversed and they would be the ones in need of the gospel. In fact, today, less than 1% of Jewish people in the world believe in Jesus, which makes them an unreached people group. Jewish people still need Jesus in order to be saved. And that is why we, as International Mission to Jewish People, are committed to bringing the gospel back to the Jewish people. And that is why we've created the Watchman Program. In the Bible, a watchman played a critical role in keeping people safe. They would keep watch from the walls of the city, looking out to the surrounding hills for any imminent threat. If danger approached, they would blast their trumpet and warn the city. The Watchman Program is our way of helping equip and enable you to act on the word of the Lord given through the prophet Ezekiel. In chapter 33, verse 7, the Lord says, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. The Watchman Program will enable you to make an eternal difference in three ways. By keeping you encouraged with stories of Jewish people whose lives have been changed by Jesus. By resourcing your prayers with requests that matter 
and will help change Jewish lives. And by opening up strategic opportunities for you to invest in our mission work so that Jewish people will come to a saving faith in Jesus. If you want to see the lives of Jewish people transformed by the love of Jesus, please fill in a Watchman card or scan the QR code with your phone and sign up online today. As a Jewish person, I once despised Jesus, but God drew me to himself as I read the Bible in my search for him. It was only after I came to faith that I discovered a Christian woman had been praying for me every day. I know it was her prayers to God that helped soften my heart and take the blinders from my eyes. Your prayers can do the same thing in the hearts of the Jewish seekers that we're sharing the gospel with every day. You can make an eternal difference in their lives. And just imagine, if thousands of Jewish people became disciples of Jesus and began sharing the gospel with those around them, well, it would be as Paul writes in Romans 11:15, that if their unbelief brought about the birth of the church, what would their belief be? But life from the dead for the whole world. So please, become a watchman today, and together, let's fulfill God's call to lovingly warn the Jewish people that Jesus is the Messiah, the only one who can save them and give them eternal life. Thank you and God bless you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, you can sign up also. Um, God really does miracles. You saw this photo with the flowers. Five Jewish people were baptized years ago. Five Jewish people, they are my contacts. And uh, this was God, God's work. God's work. It's a miracle. I could not imagine. Imagine. So Jewish, some Jewish people are very, very open. We need to find to find them. And even God can use you for for Jewish evangelism. A few days ago in Oxford, we were in, in Oxford. We met an Israeli man. Uh, he's 30, 30 years old, and we explained him the gospel. He was absolutely open, uh, cur curious, and open. He was ready to he to hear. He was ready to listen to us. So maybe God will use you sometimes, uh, occasionally or not occasionally. Please, please pray. Because in Israel, when, where I live, in Israel, the most open groups are uh, young Israelis, young Israelis, and Russian-speaking Jewish people. So please pray and uh, 